Stefano. Che buoni che arrivati. Uh, Michael and I had rehearsed a great high five, but I guess he's, uh, he's too tall now. But, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that for you later. Uh, I am very, very uh, honored to have the opportunity to, uh, uh, to join you all today. Uh, I, I particularly enjoyed listening this morning to the story from Yale because I have a similar experience. When I was uh, growing up in England, it was very common to take a year out between the equivalent of high school and university. And uh, I started a company called Microchips, <clears throat> and my father called me and said, now listen, you know, you've got your place in the university. I said, see the hope of the success of this company is not going to cause you to not go to college. <laughs> and I had to sit down and face a tough decision. And I had to make a decision, which was, do I, uh, do I go to college, uh, or do I keep growing this business? And of course, I naturally took my father's advice and made sure that I had an, uh, an academic education. And uh, I sold my stake in the company to my partner, uh, took my, uh, uh, my, my car, it was one of the few students at college with a car in those days, and, uh, and, and, and went my merry way. But what a sad story it is that there were so many of us uh, that felt like it was an and or equation. Let me tell you what I, uh, why I got involved in doing, part of what I'm doing is because of the fact that we now have a fabulous new dynamic in the world that you've got to play into. And this is really, I think, the solution to many of the challenges that those of us in the entrepreneurial support business have. And that is that our field has been transformed. Bill Green from the University of Miami is going to be here today, so I wanted to put this up, because this is something he wrote that inspired me so much that I thought I would play it back to him today to, uh, to, 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 to engage in this field. It's been transformed from a subject of narrow commercial significance into one of cultural confidence and consequence that signifies the possibility of human endeavor. The possibility of human endeavor is the critical thing. So now, we now have a billion new thinkers on the planet looking for answers, looking to solve problems, looking to generate jobs, and looking to be able to expand human welfare. Why do we have them? Well, what happened was, it used to be that we lived in a world that had people that I lived in, which was uh, an and-all world. Uh, and when I graduated from school, for example, a lot of my friends you know, coming out of law school were like, oh, well, am I going to go work for a big firm and build some equity, uh, or am I going to go change the world? Well, the, Google gen the Googles of this world have now made it perfectly cool to use the marketplace to change the world. Startups are cool with your peers. It's no longer you're the big, bad, ugly guy that went off and worked for a big corporation. You can now be that, uh, uh, you can now be that change maker in the world and work in the marketplace, which is what we meant. All of those of us that were idealists that wanted to go out and change the world, we can now do so, but guess what? We're now these new thinkers, and we're now the people that can become tomorrow's entrepreneurs. All right, so let me, let me make sure I'm for the Coffin Foundation, so I have to throw a few, uh, a few numbers at you. But this is not just about changing the world, all right? This is about the fact that we've got serious business as a field going on uh, in, in our lives. Um, here's a few I want to pick out from some recent uh, research over the last 12 months with us. If the number of billion dollar companies rose from the current average of 15 to somewhere between 45 and 75, America would permanently increase the economy's growth rate by one percentage point, uh, which would in turn uh, double GDP in 18 years. Okay, I'm reading that to you because I want you to really significantly understand what that means. It is around growth. Could you imagine, we're all sitting here faced with a challenge of how do we deal with our fiscal crisis, our budget crisis, our jobs crisis. What if we could just increase GDP by 1%? Very significant. Secondly, firms less than 100 employees account for less than one third of American jobs. But it's, not, it's more important than that. Um, this is the most important number of all. All of the net job growth in the United States comes from firms less than five years old. So the previous speakers to me talked in the Cisco Institute slides put up some very important uh, information about the importance of small businesses. Our fundamental research finding after sitting down and trying to build a base of this over the last seven years at the Kauffman Foundation has reached an interesting conclusion that we should rename the SBA the New Business Administration or the Young Business Administration. 
Because what appears to be more significant statistically is not the size of the business, but the age of the business. It's young firms we've got to care about, especially in their first year. And it does not matter if they fail, because all of those people who start those firms will be recycled into the entrepreneurial ecosphere. They will form new partnerships and relationships at all of the very startup weekend entrepreneurial ecosphere activities. And the next thing you know, they've got a new business on the block. All right, second, the next fundamental thing, which is from my perspective, I just got off an airplane from China about six hours ago. Uh, you would not believe I've been in Shanghai, we're convening the Global Entrepreneurship Congress for the next month, uh, which is 104 nations of people like you coming together to figure out uh, how to tap into this uh, entrepreneurial renaissance. But this is what's really occurred, is that now what I'm seeing the Global Entrepreneurship Week is a phenomenon where national boundaries know no, uh, we're not limited by them anymore, and innovation does not know them. Um, and what you're seeing is teams forming and reforming, uh, enterprises not failing, especially outside of this country, we try to use different words. They're just recycling, constantly recycling ideas, innovations, uh, and, and, and changing the nature of those firms. And this is the other interesting thing. I've also spent some time in Ghana. I was delighted to see that. I actually was in Ghana and happened to cross a school of entrepreneurship. It was an entrepreneur who just set it up. It was actually from Scandinavia. Um, it's amazing the things that are happening in these smaller economies. And the reason is because now all it takes to be successful is to be an individual. So the dynamic has changed. It's no longer about having the infrastructure. All right, so what are we telling and what, what conversations are we having with those 104 countries that we're engaged with around the world? Let me take some of the things that we're concluding that we're telling them. First of all, we tell them how a strategy and not a plan. And I know, by the way, that Doug from the White House is here today. So Doug, this is part, partially a message also to uh, our own government. But here's our general guidance in terms of national principles. Uh, have a strategy, no plan. Grand central planning doesn't work. Of course, I've been highly unsuccessful, I mean, I've been interestingly highly successful, excuse me, in China at convincing their ministers that they need to take this approach, which is why they're actually hosting us over there. Uh, and they've got, they, they, they understand this very keenly that they've got to allow this messy capitalism to occur. Um, so next, be cautious about venture capital. I think a lot of you have seen. Uh, uh, Garfield Foundation's positions about the, the growing importance of angels versus institutional money in terms of startups. Um, and to put it uh, uh, rather rudely, it's entrepreneurship that creates venture capital. Uh, it's not venture capital necessarily that creates entrepreneurs. Um, thirdly, lessons we're learning from Chile. Our own White House started Startup America recently, which the Garfield Foundation is very proud to be a part of. But uh, a few months ago, Chile organized something called Startup Chile. You know what they're doing? They went around and they're paying $40,000 to any young American entrepreneur who wants to come to Chile. Great scheme, by the way, and fantastic nature, beautiful country. And they will pay you $40,000 to come and bring you with your idea and start it in Chile. Interesting ideas going on. An awful lot of uh, work going on with diasporas too. Um, uh, encouraging activity outside government. This is one conversation we have with the World Bank and the IDP all the time. Stop worrying about the informal economy. You have to channel the fact that so many of these economies have a massive informal dynamic. So allow that to become your entrepreneurial fuel in the informal economy to make that work. And finally, one that we all know, education and mentoring, something that you'll hear lots about from, from, from other speakers. So we've generally said to government, try to focus not on programs, uh, but on coming up with better ground rules that facilitate the right environment for entrepreneurs to flourish. Uh, and at the end of the day, do what our president had right now in the United States has done a superb job with. And that's making sure that while uh, uh, that you use the bully pulpit, legitimize the field of entrepreneurs. And in many countries, we've found this has been essential to people being willing to take a risk, particularly countries where people are fearful of what government would think if they did something. And if there's one thing we're doing with Global Entrepreneurship Week, we have ministers and heads of state. I've got 13 heads of state now who are formerly part of Global Entrepreneurship Week. We have over four dozen ministers. And all of those ministers are standing at their bully pulpit. They're not necessarily doing programs, but they're saying, your country needs you. You are now young, educated people. You're the people who are causing uprisings in places like Egypt and Tunisia. And you need 
to reuse that power to create entrepreneurial opportunity. <clears throat> Um, you're going to hear, you can hear more about this afterwards because I don't have much time left and I'm going to get kicked off the stage in about 30 seconds. But I want to tell you a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, uh, for listening to me, you're all going to get formally, uh, become formal members of Global Entrepreneurship Week. And my partner, Kevin Langley at EO, which is a major player in our Global Entrepreneurship Week campaign, is going to bring you around your official pin. Please wear it in November. Uh, think of this as, uh, yes, I believe in entrepreneurs, okay? Um, but I also want to mention that there are a bunch of different programs I'm happy to talk to you about throughout the rest of the day. But I really want to encourage you to get with Startup Weekend and Mark Nager. We have a bunch of new initiatives at Kaufman that you might find very interesting. Uh, and I, but I will say this, and this is courtesy of Mark Nager at Startup Weekend. And this is, and, and, and I'll finish on this in just a second. This is the entrepreneurial ecosphere that you've got to be a part of. This is not about bricks and mortar. To those of you who are educators in the room, how many times are people telling you we've now got to reinvent how we learn, the future of learning? We have to reinvent how we're teaching entrepreneurship. And one of the ways we have to invent that is that it's got to be grassroots up. The most successful things that the Kaufman Foundation is funding is things where actually they never came to us for money. We saw what they were doing. They were having results, people like Startup Weekend. And we said we have to be able to do this. So if you look, you have to find your place in this entrepreneurial ecosphere. Whether you're involved in the early stage of generating ideas, the later stage of skill building, mentoring, uh, the, the, the uh, experience part of it, or further down the road with more sophisticated uh, incubators like the ones that we've also been developing uh, at the Kaufman Foundation. So um, if you want more information about Global Entrepreneurship Week, it's unleashingideas.org. If you want more information, I'm not going to uh, click through about this, but uh, uh, if you want more information about the Kaufman program, just go to kaufman.org. They have all the websites. You can look at the homepage and it'll give you all Kaufman's new websites. Uh, so I have to uh, uh, make that advertisement. But um, I would also encourage you to uh, go to entrepreneurship.org. Uh, if any of you are interested in following mine, we, all of our speakers have to, have to pitch our blog. I write every Monday morning, it doesn't matter where I am in the world, about something to do with the trend in entrepreneurship policy. Um, I want to thank you for having me here today. I'm going to be here for the rest of the day. Uh, you are part of a very exciting movement. We want to be helpful to all of you at a bare minimum in terms of providing you with a research base that provides the legitimacy of our field uh, and what I might describe as, to borrow the term from our speaker this morning, the best practices in entrepreneurial interventions to help you be successful and by virtue of being successful, attract funders like us. So many thanks. Thanks for having me. And I look forward to talking to you later. Bye.